Welcome back. We can go live now to Sonal Malhotra, our correspondent in Singapore, for more on, on what to expect next. Uh, Sonal joins us from there now. Sonal, we understand uh, that uh, the uh, special chartered plane that uh, went from India is, is due to land in Singapore shortly and that the family will fly back perhaps later tonight. That's right, indeed. That's what the High Commission uh, High Commissioner has told us. That the charter plane will be flying from New Delhi, has actually taken off, and will be landing here around local time, around 3:30, and that's and later in the day, around uh, they will be flying back to the country. As per now, there's no clarity whether they're flying back to New Delhi or going uh, to their native place, which is in UP. The Commissioner said that the decision is still to be made by the family. He also said that you know it is quite a testing time for the family as well, who's gone through so much for the past couple of days and perhaps they're giving them much time to think about how they're going to go about with the last rites and how this is going to happen but, uh, but you know what we can tell you is that she fought maybe she fought like a fighter had she had been fighting for her life at Sabdajan Hospital in New Delhi and also in the hospital behind me in Singapore. Let me just describe to you uh, how her last few moments went. We know that yesterday around 11.30 in the night here local time we got a press release saying that her condition had deteriorated for the worse. It had taken a turn for the worse that her vitals were unstable. They, she was put on maximum artificial ventilator support, put on maximum antibiotics. The doctors were trying their best to try and revive her but she was not showing any kind of response. That's when the family and the High Commission, everybody got inside the hospital and everybody, you know, they were there with her through her last times and the last really tough hours. We camped outside the hospital throughout the night to try and find out, hoping against hope, like all Indians uh, and, and, and more than that, just a woman to pray that she does perhaps a miracle happen and she does come through but that certainly did not happen. The doctors went on when they declared her dead and she, they said that she breathed her last at 4.45 a.m. Uh, she fought like a graveyard. In fact, one of the doctors went on to say that it was a privilege to have uh, to have to take care of her. And this goes on to talk about how, you know, fighting spirit and the kind of person she was. We know from account and when we were covering it in Sabdajan in New Delhi, doctors said that the time when she was wants to fight back, how she wants to come back to life and live to tell her story. That hasn't happened. But, you know, basically the entire point here perhaps is the point is the fact that, you know, the best of medical care that could be provided to her in New Delhi, the best of the world which could be given to her in, sub, in, uh, in uh, Singapore, in fact, nothing could really revive her. Just goes on to talk about and the extent of injuries that the girl faced. It's horrific maybe for us to even think about it perhaps at this time, that how and who are these men and how can a society perhaps behave in a way that she could subjected to injuries right. such acute in nature that none of the doctors like medicine perhaps could not find her way to it. Also goes on to talk about the mental trauma of the girl. She's just she was just 23. I mean, it breaks your heart to even think about the kind of uh, trauma she might have gone through and also for the family. Remember, she's a daughter of a father who sold her land to educate her, to give her a bright future in the field of medicine. But perhaps the field of medicine, in fact, has failed her, could not live up to the way she was doing. Now, once the spread, uh, once the news of her uh, demise spread here in Singapore, a lot of people have been talking to come out to us and take, uh, tell us about how they're really sad. There were also some prayers planned up maybe in the local temple here in a place called Little India and people you know, just walk up to us and say that it's really, really sad what's happened to her. It, so it's just, you know, just resonating the fact that it's not about being not about having happened to a woman, not about having happened to, it shouldn't have happened to perhaps anybody and perhaps the time that when all of us are discussing about it and all of us are praying that her soul might rest in peace, this is perhaps the time that we need to come up and change the way, uh, the, you know, uh, the way people look at women, the way people subject, the kind of way they have the torture that have been subjected women and also the way society and perhaps authorities could let such a thing, such a gruesome and ghastly thing happen to such a young girl. So, Nirutra, thanks very much for joining us there from Singapore this afternoon and uh, as you said, uh, the family is perhaps going to be returning with her body later tonight. A special chartered flight has gone there uh, to bring them back. Well, uh, there have been uh, lots of tributes pouring in, as I've been saying continuously for hours now. I spoke earlier this morning to Shabana Azmi for her thoughts. As I've
pay tributes to her this morning, the fact that she fought back the way that she did. She fought those men in the bus, which is why they attacked her the way that they did, but she fought for her life. She fought every step of the way. She said to her mother that she wanted to live. She said, she even asked her mother whether the, the, the accused had been arrested. This was a girl who was fighting till her last breath to live. That is absolutely correct. And what we need to do is to say, I will not cry, I will not despair, I will remember. The greatest betrayal to the girl is if we forget. The greatest hope of the political class is that we will forget. Instead, this becomes the clarion call for the country and we remember her, remember her courage, remember how she fought back and make that the reason why each one of us we look into ourselves, analyze, reflect, see how we have been culpable wittingly or unwittingly and not rest till we change it from within our mindsets, a mindset of a patriarchal society that thinks violence against women is acceptable. You know, we've actually refused to use the word victim about her. Unlike you know other sections of the media, we've always said that she was a survivor. And that's how you want to remember her, don't you? As a hero, as, as someone uh, who was so courageous and so brave, and despite everything, despite the kind of injuries she suffered, the trauma she suffered, she just she was a fighter right till the end. You don't want to remember her as, her as a victim, ever. Absolutely, absolutely. She is the hero. She is the glue that has brought the country's youth forward. She is the glue that is bringing each segment of our society to say, this must end. We cannot allow this to continue. We cannot call ourselves a civilized society if after raising the human cry, we all go back to business as normal. Do you believe that it can be business as normal. Do you believe it's like we were talking with Jessica here who's, who, who's been part of the protests here that this is really a genuine awakening about issues that deal with violence against women that you know this time there's no turning back. I do hope so. I do hope that that will happen. But I am cynical because I have seen outrage and I have seen anger and every time I've hoped that this will be the clarion call and it isn't because the kind of effort that is needed, the kind of persistence that is needed to bring things to a logical end, the kind of pressure that is needed is a full time job. Everybody is busy leading their lives. We cannot be making this as a gesture that we do and carry on with our lives. So it's a very difficult challenge. It's not for us to pay homilies at the moment and say, yes, it will all turn out. It really will not happen until the kind of soul searching that I'm talking about doesn't happen from deep within our society at every level. Because we have to understand that it is the mindset that is ingrained in us that gives approval for violence against women from the time she is in the fetus, from the abortions that happen, from female feticides, from unequal access to nutrition, to education, to health, to employment, not being able to make decisions about herself to dowry debts, to violence, to domestic violence and to rape. You know, uh, you, you, you're talking you know, about a, a really long and difficult path ahead and, uh, and a long-term solution when it comes to mindsets. When you look at the short term though, and the steps that the government has announced, like a database for rapists to name and shame them, like the setting up of this commission to look at better rape laws, stronger rape laws within a month. Do you think we have looked at we've looked at we've got we looked at commissions and commissions and we've in fact come to the conclusion that if you don't want to do anything on an issue, then set up a commission of inquiry because then 
it will lie somewhere in the dustbins, which has happened with commission after commission. One of the suggestions that has been made, and I think it's a very important one, is that we should demand a social audit of the police from an independent body, not from within the police themselves, like you have the CAG, for instance. If we can have an independent commission that looks at uh, police all over the country and makes that un answerable to parliament and to the people, I think that would be a strong step as well. As we have been reporting all morning, the young 23-year-old girl called India's Braveheart has died in a Singapore hospital of the grievous injuries she sustained during a gang rape attack on the 9th of 16th of December. She was flown out 48 hours ago to Singapore uh, with the hope that the facility she was moving in would be able to deal with her critical care and also get her ready for an organ transplant uh, immediately once she did recover, but her injuries far too grievous for her to have survived. Uh, Ranjana Kumari, woman in character, is joining us uh, for the lessons perhaps that we as a society need to learn uh, from this horrific incident. Ranjana Kumari, we talk about these incidents. Uh, the brutality of this one woke us up from a public apathy we've seen towards violent sexual crime against women and children. What's the way forward? How do we sustain a campaign without getting excited and overheated uh, to what we really think is the need for justice and equality for women in this country? Maya, today is a very sad day. It's a very tragic day, as you rightly said. We could not save her. She really wanted to live. She kept saying that, save me, I want to live. But uh, no, uh, we could not do anything through our medical system and everything failed. Uh, we are very sorry about that, but uh, her life should not be uh, you know, lost, just like her spirit has to live in the kind of you know, uh, resolve that youth had shown on the uh, streets, the people have, of the country have shown, uh, you know, we should not sit back and just uh, wait for uh, systems to deliver, we should keep the pressure on. We want uh, police to be more effective, we want conviction to come by, we want fast track courts, as I have al already said that we should have a uh, public register of the sexual offenders, so they should be named and shamed and totally uh, ostracized. I think that will be the befitting response to the memory of this girl whose life was cut short at the hands of these cruel, uh, you know, the, the dastardly act that they, they uh, you know, the heinous crime that they committed. Uh, it's really very, very sad and I think no girl, no girl in future uh, should uh, meet such a fate that we have to ensure as a society, as a government and all our people must work towards that. I only am hoping and praying that, you know, the words expressed on her death by so many people, uh, people sitting in power, people from society, people, uh, you know, who are in the media, I think those words will be remembered and they will remember their words so that they work towards setting up a system which will protect our girls. Maya, this is really, I'm, I'm feeling so terrible that, you know, this happened. Ms. Kumari, I think you are really hoping this will not happen. You, you, you made a very uh, valid point right now, the, the words that we are all mouthing today as Indians, whatever walk of life we come from. The challenge, as we say, is within society. We are the problem and we need to be the solution as well. Um, how do we change years of misogyny? Maya, this, this is what it is. This is misogyny. This is the kind of hatred that society is really, uh, you know, involved in towards women. Uh, I am hearing all kinds of comments since morning. People are saying we pray women as goddesses, our religion, this, that and the other. We don't want to be goddesses. Please don't uh, put us on pedestal as goddesses. We want to be human beings, respected, our dignity is protected. We want our public spaces. We want our political spaces. We don't want, you know, any of these kind of uh, big, big things that uh, Indian society has become used to talking about women, right. and not respecting women. In fact, uh, you know, even right to life has been denied, not in the womb, but also on the streets, on the, uh, you know, look, look at look at what has happened to her. Right. I think her memory should live. We should respect her 
spirit by really making the change happen and in, and ensure that no other girl, no other girl meets the same fate in future. Right, Ranjana Kumari, thank you very much uh, for joining us with your comments. Um, we are also going to go across now to my colleague Alok Pandey who is joining us from the Savdajang Hospital where for 10 days this young girl battled bravely. She was taken there by the police in a PCR van on the night of the 16th of December. Uh, an, hour, an hour plus after they found her um, lying on the road. Uh, where she had been dumped by the men who gang raped her and brutally assaulted her and her friend. Her friend survived. He was discharged with minor injuries. Unfortunately, the young girl uh, did not make it. She fought. She battled hard, bravely. But many Sabdajan doctors also uh, moved and shaken by this morning's news. Alok, they worked night and day to save this girl's life. Many of them actually even saying uh, privately that they had not seen this kind of injury, this kind of abuse inflicted on a human being. Well, you are absolutely right. In fact, I just had a word uh, with the medical superintendent of this hospital, Dr. Athani. And he was telling me how everyone, after they got the news uh, early morning, all of them were really shaken up. Uh, all of them, they spoke to each other and uh, really they said that, you know, it was just very tough for them to deal with this news as human beings. Uh, because they said that when this girl had actually come to them, it was the kind of abuse that they had never seen or seen very rarely on a human being, like you were saying, Maya. And uh, the fact is that they said that at the end of the day, they were not very hopeful that this girl would survive, but at the same time, every every caretaker wants his or her patient to survive. That's why they had put in the best teams to try and hope, uh, to try and see if they could do something about this girl. They said that uh, they were hoping that there would be a miracle. In fact, Dr. Athani was recounting some cases to me where he said that, you know, people with severe injuries somehow managed to recover and somehow managed to walk out of the ICU in which this girl had been admitted. But he said that in this case, it seems that that was not to be the case. About uh, shifting uh, the patient to the Singapore hospital, he said that they were very, very clear on the fact that here was a hospital that was uh, that was very good in both cases, in providing for critical care and also organ transplant. So they felt that even if by a rarest of rare chance this girl could recover from her critical state, then an organ transplant could be performed on her, on her almost immediately. So that's why they approved her going away to Singapore. They said that it was totally a medical decision. But I think as human beings, these doctors really they see cases of injury every day but this is something that really affected them terribly and that's what the superintendent was also telling me that everyone in this ICU was praying and hoping that somehow this girl would manage to make it it seems that and now their hopes have been shattered but they say that uh, they, they're really very shocked and uh, sad at what has happened. Right Alok and, and as, uh, as we were saying repeatedly uh, this case really um, I don't want to use the word landmark for uh, sounding uh, wrong at this point in time but certainly one that has made us all sit up and shake off a certain amount of apathy we as citizens uh, react with to violent crime in this country. Alok, thanks so much for coming back to you for more uh, from uh, the hospital as well that treated her for 10 days. A very quick break right now but there's lots more when we come back.